before, my name is Elin and this is my channel where I talk about books and book related stuff. I am filming this on a beautiful sunny Monday morning and I'm really excited because today I'm actually going back to work in the library. I've been working from home for the last two months so I'm really stoked about finally going back and work in the library itself. I am a librarian. I have a degree in uh, library and information science and it's my dream job and I'm really excited about going back. But I am not going to talk about the pandemic that's going on. It's still going on even though Norway is slowly opening up again and I'm going back to work. So let's get to it and talk about what I read in April because that is what today's video is going to be about. It's what I read in April. It's a wrap up. So I talked about how March was a really good reading month for me and April was a really good reading month as well. Even better actually. I read 14 books. Uh, that is... That is... I'm a bit blown away to be honest. So with not much more ado, let's get to it and dive into the books that I read in April. So the first book I read in April was actually a crime book. I don't read a whole lot of crime, but I try to squeeze in some crime every now and again. Uh, this was partly because of coming up to Easter and I normally try to read a little crime before Easter due to Easter being a huge crime book month for Norway. So I, this year I decided to read this book, which is by Jussi Aldler Olsen, a Danish author. This book is a Norwegian translation of a book that was originally written in Danish and this book is the first in a series uh, it's called Abdeling Q or uh, Department Q I'm not quite sure what it's translated into English if it's translated into English is it translated into English I don't know anyway so it's about a detective called Karl Merck um, he has been shot previously, so he's kind of dealing with that, but not really wanting to admit, neither for himself or for others, that he has been highly affected by an episode that happened previous to this book. This book is called Kvinni Buddha. Uh, and it's about a woman who has been kidnapped and taken for death, but we we kind of understand quite quickly that she is being held capture and then Karl Merck is trying to figure out about this cases that has kind of gone cold and this is one of the cases that has kind of gone cold and then he kind of suspects that maybe things has not been what they thought they were. I thought this was an okay read. I know a lot of people think it's really, really exciting and a lot of people like these books. Uh, for me, it was kind of okay. It wasn't a bad read, but it wasn't like a super great read either. But yeah, pretty decent. Uh, if you like crime, it would probably be something you would like. If you like the like police detective kind of crime. And it's Scandinavian crime as well, so I know a lot of people un enjoy Scandinavian crime. Next book is a reread. Uh, with all these things here. It's Night in Middlehurst by Marianne Kavrin. Beautifully written book uh, set in the Second World War. I know it has been translated into English. It's called Almost Autumn and it's about the deportation of the Jews in Norway in 1942. And it's about a family, Jewish family, and how they deal with a lot of things before uh, this deportation and like uh, the, the days that leads up to it. Uh, the author has taken like real events in Norway and written a beautiful story. Uh, it goes into details about like what happens, but it's also a lot about, it's more about like the humans behind everything. 
So it's a really good read and I read it for work. So hence all these little poster lap, uh, poster thingies <laughs> in the book. So it's a really, really good uh, read. Um, and to be honest, this cover, I really, really think is beautiful. I have seen the English translated version of this book and the cover of that and it's not as pretty in my opinion. 63 Måter å elske deg på which is a Norwegian book again. Uh, it's written by Monika Bjermeland. I'm scared of pronouncing the name incorrectly so I have to like just make sure to say the right name. Anyway, uh, so this is about a woman uh, when she was 10 years old, she found out that the guy she thought was her dad was not her real dad. But her real dad was from Turkey. They did live in Norway though. And um, he, he is just like a bus travel away from where she lives. And when she contacts her real dad, her biological dad, it turns out he is not very interested in having that much contact with his daughter. He has two sons now, and of course the sons are more important than the daughter. And this is a really, really beautifully written book about a daughter for a father relationship. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. It was such a really good read and I I really, really enjoyed it. So if you read Norwegian, this might be a read you would be interested. It was published in 2019, um, but I read it this year. <laughs> I am also trying to read, well, I'm trying to read library books that I have at home, but I also try to read books that has been sitting on my shelf for a while. And the next book is definitely one that has been sitting on my shelf for a bit. Uh, I am not quite sure how long I've had this, maybe 10 years? I can't remember, but yeah, I think it's like 10 years or more that I've had this book on my shelf. So I finally got around to read it and it's another Norwegian book and it's a book crossing book because I am a book crosser that if you follow my channel you should know by now that I'm a book crosser. And it's this book, The Best of Brantos by Helene Uri. And it's set in a um, university academic sort of uh, environment. It's in a ling linguistics uh, department. It's, um, it's called the Department for Futuristic um, Linguistics. And I found this to be quite amusing. Uh, it's There's like intrigues and love stories and lots of stuff going on. Um, is it realistic? I don't know because I've never worked in a academic environment. I'm a librarian. I, I did go to university but I never worked at a university per se. So I really enjoyed this. It was a fun read. Um, I don't know if this has been translated. I would not think it had because it's I would be surprised, but yeah. Helena Uri is actually an author I really, really like. I have read more books by her and they, she writes really good books and I really enjoy her writing style. It's very obvious that language is her thing. Miss Austen by Jill Hornby. If you don't know already, I am a huge Jane Austen fan. I love her works. I first read Jane Austen on a rail trip from Warsaw to Oslo. I had been on interrail for three weeks and uh, my then boyfriend and I were going back to Oslo and I had been to a bookshop and picked up Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because they had English books. And I started reading it and I was sold. So that's it. This book is of course not by Jane Austen and I have to also stress that it's not non-fiction. This is fiction. Uh, it's a really enjoyable read though. It's inspired by the fact that after Jane Austen's death, her sister Cassandra 
did something that has both frustrated and um, made academics to wonder uh, in the, after that. She took a whole bunch of mail, uh, mail correspondence between Jay, Jane Austen and others and burnt them. Probably due to keep secrets and stuff like that, family secrets. But we will never know. We will never know. It takes these letters that is no longer there and the main character in this book is Cassandra and it tells about family secrets. It doesn't really say anything of the back of the book or anything about what it is about, but I just like saw the book and wanted to read it because Jane Austen and is kind of inspired by her. So the main character is Cassandra, as I said, but we also get like, um, it's kind of describes the relationship between Cassandra and her sister, which is like a genius, but complicated and Cassandra and others and Jane Austen and others and a lot of stuff. A really, really nice, cozy read. Kan vi bare late som by Camilla Sanmo. I really enjoy this. <clears throat> I am going to say that it has an element of LGBTQ+, which I really liked. But that is not the main story, to be honest. It's there, but it's not the main story. So, this book is about a girl whose name is Emma. And when she's not like staying at home, playing Sims or reading blogs and dreaming about a big blogger she does figure skating and mind you figure skating is not a big sport in norway you might think it was because it's a winter sport but it's it's a very small sport hockey on the other hand is actually quite well it's not big but it's bigger at the uh, rink where they practice there has been a uh, mess up there has been a double booking and the hockey boys are there when they're going to train and it looks like they have to share the ring for the next months. And of course, this is not popular among them, especially not among the figure skaters. So I'm not going to a lot of uh, details, but there's a bet and there's about something about relationships. And as I said, LGBTQ+. So yeah. Really, really enjoy this. All the feels. Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. And it was just as good as the first time I read it. I read it for the first time, I don't remember, but approximately 20 years ago. So it's, it's a fun read. It's a, uh, it's, it's very comical, hilarious. It's, yeah. It's a really, really, really enjoyable read. And I think I might do a video about this and the TV series that was released. Was it like last year, I think? So I think, I think I might talk about this in another video with about this, like with the TV series as well. Next book up was Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. As you know that I had a reading vlog about this and my last video I will link that down below and as I said then this is a collection of short fiction and I really enjoyed it so highly highly recommend especially if you're a Neil Gaiman fan about also also if um if you've seen my last video I also said that there are short stories here that that it would benefit you if you already read uh, American Gods by Neil Gaiman and this is Detta är inte oss by Neda Alai and I picked this book not mainly because it's young adult but because it's um, it's shortlisted for the Norwegian Book Blogger Award and I will be voting in that. I nominated books earlier this year and later this year we will vote. And this is one of the shortlisted books, so I needed to read this and I'm so glad I did. So this is about a girl, Sanna, 
Her mom passed away uh, about a year ago and her dad is in a really deep grief and he's depressed so Sana has to take care of her dad and she's trying to do this as well as uh, dealing with school and friendship and her best friend doesn't really doesn't hardly look at her these days so there's all these things and lots of stuff going on so it's kind of so this is like yeah, a book that I would say it's all the feels. It's a really well written one about how grown-ups can't take care of the kids and stuff like that. So very good read. Next book up is one that I've had been meaning to read for a while. It's Helga Flatland, En Moderne Familia. It basically means a modern family. It has nothing to do with the TV series that uh, as far as far as I understood, but I haven't seen the TV series and I'm not really interested to be honest. But this book was a fun read or interesting read. It's about a family of today. You have a pair of parents in their 70s and they decide that they want a divorce. And they have three kids, two daughters and one son, and it's the book is about how they deal with it and their own lives and their own relationships, the kids' relationships and the par parents and stuff like that. So quite enjoyable, well written. This is an author I really like and this has also gotten really good reviews from Norwegian media. A book that I actually re have had on my bookshelf for a couple of years. I picked this us up on the Oslo Visitor Center book crossing shelf and it's Room, written by Emma Donohue. I first heard about this many years ago. I think it must have been, I saw it in a bookshop in London at some point and I picked it up, looked at it and thought, hmm, that looks like an interesting read. And yes, it really was an interesting read. It's about a mother and a son who's been kept captive for years. And the book is seen from the son's perspective from Jack. Jack is five years old. And his whole life has been inside this one root in a shed in a garden. And he doesn't really know anything else. And the mom has been telling him that this is the whole world. And then she kind of, when he has like turned five and she thinks that she has to start to tell him about the real world. And then they make a plan to escape and they escape. This is not a big spoiler. They do escape, manage to escape. And a big chunk of this book is about how especially Jack deals with the world outside after having lived captured and inside one room for four or five years and the mom has been there for seven years so very interesting book um especially because it's written for from a five-year-old's perspective that makes this book even more interesting to read so really enjoyed it really a page turner indeed and since we're doing rereading in April, <laughs> it seems, I did another reread. And it's this book, De Døde Ser Deg by Alexander Löken. And this is a sort of a science fiction fantasy thriller. You have a world, it's actually 2019, but it's not our world. Well, it's our world, but with other technology. You have a website that is a little bit like our Facebook, but it's called Oculink and is fairly more advanced. And then you have uh, Everest Brooks, who owns Oculink. He's a young man. He's like a billionaire under 30. Uh, the world's richest man under 30. And he has this and he has like access to information about everybody and the whole world is like there's like cameras everywhere drones street cameras so he has like all these information and Everest is not a nice guy 
So he uses this information to get gain power and gain money. And then you have Liv. She lives in to Tokyo, in Japan. Her family are diplomats. And she has a disease. It's called Likpesten. Um, the dead body plague would be the translation. I don't think it's a very good translation, but it's a Norwegian book and the word in Norwegian works really well. However, I think if they could come up with a similar word that is not quite quite the same, but they, I think that would be really good. I think this would be a book that would be really well translated. And it would also work really good as a film. And yet, well, but going back to, to what it's about, Liv has this disease, so she knows she's going to die within six months. She's really, really have this disease. There's no cure for it. And then she and uh, three other kids are kidnapped by Everest because they have special powers. Liv thought she kept this secret. She had not told her parents or anyone, but she can actually talk to dead people. She's what uh, they called a necroromantic. So this is really, really a page turner. It's a young adult book and so, so good. Next book up is another Norwegian read and with a very long title. Fordi Venus passerte en Alpefjol den dagen jeg blei født by Mona Høving. This is about a relationship between two sisters and it's so beautifully written and very poetic and it's about a woman and her sister who goes up to a small mountain village because her sister needs some recreation and stuff and they live in this hotel and things happen and yeah it's basically between uh, about the their relationship though so what happens isn't really that important it's what is said and how things are written it's a really really beautiful book my last read of april was a non-fiction book uh, it's called inside the kingdom and it's written by carmen bin laden and it's about her life inside the kingdom of saudi saudi arabia and she is the sister-in-law of in of uh, osama bin laden and this has created a whole lot of problems for her and she is totally different from him <laughs> to say the least um so uh the bin laden family is huge uh the father of osama bin laden and uh, carmen bin laden's husband has loads of wives and loads of kids and when Carmen uh, marries she meets him in Switzerland she grew up in Switzerland and she tells her story about how it's like to live inside Saudi Arabia and being a woman and how frustrating she finds it to be so I found this to be really 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 interesting it's like a world apart from my world and I've seen somebody say oh how can she complain she has like all this money she's really rich and she has servants how can she complain but just because she can't go outside but she basically lives in a prison she can't go outside without being chaperoned she can't do anything she can't have opinions <laughs> basically uh her pa her husband is not that bad though so even though she has to kind of live by the country's rules when she's at home she can read books but it's like getting books is really hard uh, they have to like get them from other countries and stuff so that that was really interesting read so that is it for today and now I need to end this because I need to go to work and I hope you are staying safe and are good and I will see you in my next video. Bye!